And if you look at United, and I want, that's what I was going to hopefully lead this on to asking you about your club. If you look at United and you look at City and you look at the money spent in the last decade, United, I believe, have spent more than City, but City are out here winning trebles and titles. Man United are out here still no nearer to winning titles than they were since Ferguson left. So I was going to ask you off the back of that, like what is going on with your, your club ownership and all this Richard Arnold stuff and the new owners and what, what's going on with all that? A great, great question. A brilliant segue from what we're talking about, because you're absolutely right. Spending money does not guarantee success. When a lot of people challenge me for not liking the Glazers, it's the atypical bog standard, basic bitch analysis of they spend money, therefore good. And you always know that rivals don't really believe that because they sing songs in stadiums now that the Glazers are staying and they celebrate this. So that tells <laughs> yeah. you, again, that's why I say to Man United fans, don't be triggered by it. Look at people's actual behavior as opposed to the nonsense banter they give you. But we waste money because we have no plan. The, yeah. the, the biggest difference between Man City and Man United, yes, their owners have invested actual capital. Yes, their owners... Look, there's, there's question marks over City. And we're actually going to move on to them a little bit later with sure. the charges. And we'll see more come out about Chelsea today, which we've got content coming out on later. So if it ever turns out, and I always say this, that City have got the money that they've spent through ill-gotten gains and cheating the system, I'll change my opinion on them as a club. However, until that's proven, my stance remains as thus. They're an impeccably well-run football club. So that is why they achieve more than us. Not because of what they spend per se. That's a part of it. But it's how well they, they're run and the planning of which City put into place. We don't have a plan. To go from Fergie to Moyes, to LVG, to Jose, to Oli, to essentially Ten Ha with, with the interim of Ragnick, shows you no clear direction or plan. There's no one style of football that the club agrees on. The fact that we have a recruitment team, coaches, and a board that all pull in very different directions and see the club in, in a different light. That's That's been the problem for the past decade, is there's no plan. That makes the culture bad. And, and I'll use a business saying, because it works in this context, that culture co culture eats strategy for breakfast. And it will always do that. So with the new ownership structure that's coming in, look, I, I remain skeptical, not so much of the new owners. I know they haven't been the most successful with Nice. I understand that. I know they haven't had the most success elsewhere. But listen, people were saying that, oh, the Qataris will do a great job. The only example we have of that is Paris Saint-Germain, which domestically it's great. But in Europe, we will laugh at them. So... And I know on paper it was going to be different people owning it, but there was a lot of speculation it was going to be the same people at grassroots level in, in Qatar. But anyway, so for me, you got a bad back. <laughs> oh, don't, 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 don't. You have no <laughs> idea. I suffer the same. I suffer no the same. Idea. I'm, I'm doing something similar to you, right, in terms of the health kick and that. And and I'm just working out every day and I'm just in bits, if I'm honest. I'm, I'm too old for this, Terry. I'm trying, I'm trying to pretend I'm 21 again with some of the things I'm doing. <laughs> Struggling, I, mate. I, I hear you, mate. And so with that, with the new ownership structure coming in, I like the idea of Jean-Claude Blanc. I like the idea. And it's just come out now from, from a journalist called Santi, who's very credible, uh, based in France, that, that Jean-Claude uh, Blanc will become the new CEO. He'll replace Richard Arnold. Right. Man United want Paul Mitchell, and Paul Mitchell wants to join Man United. He's someone that's very well thought of. He's good. Um, He's yeah, and the club's good. also holding discussions with Michael Edwards. So there could be a, a trifecta of Michael Edwards, Paul Mitchell, and Jean-Claude Blanc coming into the club with, of course, uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe kind of overseeing it. And what my hope is, is that Sir Jim does have full autonomy over the sporting element. Because if the Glazers don't have really any say or control and they're, they're allowing him to run it and operate it, there is a chance that we could become successful. However... There are still lots of questions that we have to ask about this new ownership. We know he's buying it. With the, the, is the 1.3 billion of investment debt? Who has to pay that debt back? Could the club ever have to pay that debt back? It's a yeah. big question. If that debt's being paid by Ineos and it's never going to touch Man United's books, I don't care about it because it won't ever impact us. We then need to be told what's happening with stadiums, what's happening with training facilities, what is happening with the actual seven, 800 million pound of debt that the club sits in. Is there a plan to break it down? And we need to know, is there a plan for him to own more than 25% in the in the short, medium, and long-term future? So there's lots of questions to answer. And we have to get all those things right and all those things motoring in the right direction to progress as a football club. I think all of it is important because as much as people say the players don't have an excuse, I disagree. 
if you've ever worked in a business or been part of a sports team where there's problems, it impacts performance in, in, in every single way, shape and form. So that is what the club needs to do. I'm excited about the change because at the end of the day, yes, I wanted someone to come in and buy the Glazers outright, but they said no to it. We're not doing it. Mm. So the Qataris walked away, which I'm disappointed in. So Jim has stayed in and said, okay, well, I'll buy 25% and slowly buy you out. I still think in the long term, that's going to be better for Man United than, than the Glazers staying just by themselves. And I know there's a lot of fans that say, we only want a full sell. But these are the same fans saying this. So I see that keep buying their season tickets, <laughs> keep buying the football kits, keep going yeah, to games. Yeah. And I think to myself, well, you're not doing anything to force them out. So this is the best of the situation that we can find ourselves in. But what he's doing right, in my opinion, and this is uh, in theory, because we have to see it in practice, is he's getting rid of the, the key decision makers who have led to 10 years of decline. And for me, that's a key fundamental part to us improving. Because if he just keeps, if Sir Jim comes in and keeps all the same people in running the club and making the decisions that have been here for 10 years, barring Ed Woodward, I don't understand how anybody thinks we can improve. We, we, yeah. We just... Look, I think one of the key things you said there is, it's the same thing that we have with Levy, is fans can talk a lot about getting man uh, owners out. But let's be honest, right? Half these owners, they don't care about sentiment, Terry. <laughs> the, no. these, these owners don't care. They, they will say, yes, we will sell, or no, we won't. So if the best you can do is to get Jim Ratcliffe in, so Jim Ratcliffe in, it was 25%. And then slowly but surely maybe chip away with a couple of percent here and a couple of percent there until he gets the majority ownership, then that's win-win, right? That's that's the relative win that you can't control. Let's be fair. None of us, none of us can control anything we talk about in, in, mm -hmm. in reality. So I think that's a win-win for Man United. But I think you're right. Culture, I think a, a phrase you just coined there, and I can't remember what it was, it was culture trumps. Culture each strategy. Culture each strategy. The culture is so important because when you look at the biggest and best clubs in world football, when they're at their best and when they're winning and everything, you look how harmonious everything is from top to bottom, from top to bottom. You look at the clubs that win sporadically, the clubs that are in and out. Chelsea, great example, right? They're having to create a brand new culture now because their culture for years and years and years was short-term cultures. Cultures are? What am I saying? <laughs> I was trying to say short-termism culture, where it was mm. a culture of win, 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 because we buy the best players. But then when everyone else caught up with them and could also buy the best players, that culture doesn't really mean well, anything. Well, if you look at the situation with Chelsea, and I'm, I'm gonna re I've got content coming out in it later, when you read this new article that's out, you sit there and go, okay, the, the Chelsea and Roman empire, which was just buy, 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 sack, 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 it gets praised. But if, it's, if a lot of this has been built upon offshore payments and, and, and illegal from the point of view of against the laws of the game, not illegal from a criminality point of view, then the strategy wasn't a real one, was it? If you, if you have to cheat, and let's just say this turns out to be true, if it turns out they've cheated, then it's a case of that approach to how you did things wouldn't have worked if you hadn't have you know, cut those corners as an example. It becomes, and Chelsea is the anomaly in England. Chelsea is the anomaly in, yeah. is the anomaly in England of a team who spent big on players and just sacked managers and carried on being fairly successful. But that Damn. started to dwindle as soon as FFP came in. And it dwindled because at the same time as FFP coming in, all the new TV deal money came in, which went from hundreds of millions to billions, and everybody started to have money. Have then money. new owners came in. And you have to have a long-term strategy, a long-term style of play, you have to stick, not stick by managers per se. You have to stick with the right managers for a period of time. Player power cannot be part of your football club. It won't work. And I think that that's why I think with Todd Bowley and what they're doing, they made mistakes, but they're moving in the right direction, in my opinion. When you think about how these other clubs are run, and Brighton are a great example. Pound for pound, in my opinion, they're the best run club in England. Up there with Man City. Oh, brilliantly run. And, and I'll tell you what, and Brentford. Brentford as well. And, and Brentford, a superbly run football in, club. Impeccably run, impeccably, yeah. impeccably, impeccably run. And from, from my point of view, I just want my club to be run well. And the, the irony in all of this is everyone views sport from a different spectrum. Some look at it as entertainment, and I do. But sport has always been a big part of my life, whether it's been competing in it or watching it. And I take a lot of influence in my life from sport, whether it be a particular athlete or a manager, how they conduct themselves, how they worked hard, how they focused. I've taken that into my own life and gone, okay, well, 
I'm going to take some of these best practices. Again, another argument me and Lee have on straight facts is when he gets annoyed, when well, how can you compare Arteta to Pep? I'm like, well, wouldn't you rather Arteta copies the um, or imitates or takes influence from the greats rather than trying to invent his own ways? I don't do anything innovative. I just go, right, well, this great businessman did this. So I'm going to start doing that. And this great business person did X and it really worked for them. So I'm going to do my version of that. That's the way you should operate. And that's how I always viewed sport. And I look at Man United and the clubs, every club makes mistakes. Every club does things wrong. But I look at what we went through when when the Munich air disaster happened and how we grew through that and what the club became. I, I look at how we lost our way through the mid to late 70s and the 80s and what Sir Alex Ferguson did when he came in to rejuvenate the club and what he did to get us back to the very top and the stories and the, and, 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 and the learns from it. And Man United inspired me, not just because of winning. Tr- when I started supporting Man United, it was two years before the two or three years before the Premier League existed. We hadn't won a league title in the best part of 20 plus years. I didn't support Man United for what they were doing on the pitch. I supported them for what they were as a football club and what they were trying to get back to. And I actually, I fell in love with the romance of it, but also the, the way you're, you're meant to carry yourself, the way we went to games, we're in suits and we were, you know, we were proper and we've lost our way. And I'm not upset that we don't win trophies anywhere anymore per se. I'm upset that we don't, we're not run like Manchester United should be. I'm upset that we have become a shadow of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. What we were, and it's it's like seeing you know you might have had a mate in your life or a friend or a relative who you know good job, well educated, got their life together, and maybe they get a few bad things that happen. They lose their way, and you see them three years, five years later, and they're, they're a shadow of themselves, and it's heartbreaking to see them in, in, in that state. That's how I view my football club. And it's not, I, want to be, I want to win things, of course I do, but if we start to be run well, if we start to behave properly, if we start to conduct ourselves in the manner which is becoming to the history of this football club, I don't have a God-given right to win. I'll still be happy with that, as long as we are run right. I, I believe I, if we run right I, with our money, we will win anyway, but I just want to be run correctly. I really do. I, I, I agree with you completely. And culture is so important. And culture, planning, strategy, all of these things are really, really important. And that's what City have implemented. And if uh, if we go back through the Premier League eras, right, if we look at sort of the Premier League era, if we look at these decades, there is no coincidence other than Chelsea being the anomaly, as you said, there's no coincidence that Man United dominated, right? Because they had the best youth team. They had the best... They had the best scouts buying the best players that fit Ferguson and they had the best manager and all these kind of stuff. And the culture was great. Then it moved to Arsenal and Man U. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying these people were out by themselves. Mm. Then you had Arsenal with Wenger coming in and implementing his strategy, his culture, his no one can eat mayonnaise and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, at the time was groundbreaking, yeah. right? At the it time was, it, was it was like, sorry, what? We're not allowed to have ketchup on us. What, we're not allowed a sausage sandwich in the morning before a match, you know, all this kind of stuff. So you had you had Man United, then you had Wenger, then you then you had you know Liverpool with Klopp, Man City with with our uh, with with Pep Guardiola. And the anomaly in all of that was Chelsea, who weren't doing it via a culture. Chelsea were doing it via look how good Chelsea's squad was. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea could have some bad three or four bad games, they'd sack a manager, and then uh, Scaloni, Ancelotti, whoever comes in is going, oh, hang on. I've got Drogba, Robin, Lampard, Deco, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamp- it, it, um, the, the only The only way, were, the only way it could work again now, what Chelsea did, is if they could build a squad as good as that, as strong, strong as that, and keep it together, then yeah. you could rotate managers. But it's hard to do that now. Um, and by the way, some people said I was a glory hunter. The first two seasons, I remember watching Man United play, we came, we came 13th and 6th. And they, by the way, were like the fourth and fifth season that the manager was at the club. So I wasn't supporting a team that was winning and I wasn't supporting a team that looked at it. But it was it was funny, really, because of the school I went to in East London. David Beckham was from there. And that's also why the Man United bug caught on, because we've got this kid that went to our school. He was 10 years older than us, but he was going to play for Man United and he was being tipped to be this absolute superstar. That's kind of the reason as well. So maybe a little bit of inside inside track there. So some super chats here. First one says, culture change all starts uh, with leadership. Man United may uh, uh, too, too many different ideas as to how they want the club to be run. One uh, need one idea and people uh, to support, not 10 people with 10 ideas. Do you know what happens sometimes? In life, Like we, we, we love it where we want life to be. We, we like living in a world where it's very... Um, 
democratic, but sometimes you need to have a little bit of, I think the word is um, like be autocratic when it comes to business at times where somebody says, no, this is what we're doing. And then you employ people that share that view and share that vision. So you all work as one. You can't have four or five different people at the top with all completely different views fighting against each other all the time because you end up where Man United are. Uh, FYR, yeah, Luton are fan owned. That's absolutely right. Um, Tottenham Cup top four is what you're saying there. Yeah, Luton being fan owned as well. Again, how could they ever compete with City or United? It's crazy. Um, I just saw a crazy stat. Uh, Sancho was the last Man United forward to score at Old Trafford in the Premier League. He scored in the final game of the season versus Fulham. What? They can't be. We, we, oh, forward. No, you're right. Yeah, none of our strikers scored at home in the Premier League this year. You're right. That wow. is a crazy stat. That's how bad wow. we've been this season. Um, uh, on Savas' point, if Pep wins the league, Arteta hasn't fouled. But if Klopp or anyone else, then Arteta has fouled, um, in, in my opinion. I, I, I think Liverpool... And Arsenal are very, very close at the moment. I don't think it's failure to finish behind Klopp. Anyone else, yes. I, I hear yeah, him. Yeah, I hear yeah. him. But I agree. Yeah, it depends, I, I, how far, it depends how far behind Klopp. If he finishes 25 oh, points behind, yeah, 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 of course. We've got yeah. to throw that context in because somebody will say, yeah, well, what yeah, if yeah. he comes 12th? Yeah, yeah, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I wanted to ask you before. I've got another super chat here. I want to ask you a question. This is according to Lee's logic, everyone in the world um, ever has, sorry, Everyone in the world ever was a f was fouled at being the fastest person of all time, other than Usain Bolt. He doesn't actually believe what he says. Uh, do you know what it is, Charlie? I don't think it's not that he doesn't believe what he says, and I don't want to. I'm not speaking ill of Lee here. I think he's right, but I think he looks at it through his Arsenal lens. I think he looks at it from how he feels about Arsenal, and he applies that logic to everything. Because Lee Gunner's not a failure when it comes to YouTube, but he is if you compare him to KSI. But if we say KSI's success and everybody else's failure, do, do, we, do I feel like a failure because I don't have what KSI has? No, I don't. Nah, do I feel yeah. like a failure because Mark Goldbridge has more followers than me? No. So it's, it's, uh, it's, you can't apply that logic to everything because I know it ain't true because I don't feel like a You may think I'm a failure, but being a failure is more so how you feel about yourself as well.